Free Holdings, that's the stock I was referencing uh, right before we went to break. Stock's down more than 10%. Uh, all this sort of happening in the last, you know, several moments or so. Um, they updated their guidance, right? Or in, in, par in part of their earnings report, obviously their guidance, they say department store, uh, they saw customers spending less. Coors, Michael Coors, mm -hmm. Versace. Yep. We're not talking low end. Jimmy Choo. We're talking high, high end. We're, we're talking weakness in the luxury brand. They say it's likely to remain soft through the summer. Don't disagree at all. I think the evidence is building. Uh, this, this is a stock that literally has been cut in half since February. You thought that it would be somewhat immune because of the exposure to luxury, but we're seeing Versace. They're, they're, they're citing weakness in the Versace brand. So that's where, you know, in general, I have this, this overall difficulty understanding if we see, as you said, the plateau in a lot of these AI stocks, you take away the market's umbrella, you can't tell me that it's not raining out because it is. So it sets up for Lulu, uh, which is tomorrow after the bell, which you own in Joe T. Since yes. we're, you know, we got Dollar General also, which I want to talk to you about in a moment, but since we're sort of segueing from the higher end, Make you nervous about Lulu? Um, I, well, nervous, no. Cautious, yes. Um, do I expect much? Not really. Not after Foot Locker and after Nike. Obviously, footwear is in a challenge position. You need consumption to recover to Anastasia's point in China. They're not footwear focused. Yes, no, they have. But, but, but that's, part, that's part of the story. Okay, so here's the story. The story's footwear. The story is direct to consumer. How much can direct to consumer really contribute, continue to grow? The story is international mix. Is, is, China, is Chinese consumption strong right now? No, it's not. They need it to be. So the stock has been falling back. Um, we're in at a good price, but not a great price relative to where we are now. It's falling back to the 200-day moving average. And overall, consumer discretionary, unless you're a home builder, Tesla or Amazon, it's in a very difficult position. Dollar General, by the way, hit a new 52-week low yesterday, another one which that we'll see tomorrow. Another one that has broken momentum. It's on the back of Target and BJ. Target's down 14% this month. BJ's is down 20% this month. You would think that the discounters would do well, uh, but in the case of Dollar General, again, the momentum's broken, and you're not seeing the evidence that that's the case. Yeah, to the point about China, I think that's kind of the pillar to a lot of the retail story right now. I mean, if you think about high-end consumption, you know, that was supposed to rebound and perhaps China-driven, but that's not happening. I mean, you think about youth unemployment rate in China, for example, is 20 percent. And the story of the post-pandemic recovery is so different there than it is in the United States. We've got stimulus. We've got stock market gains. You know, we, we had this huge boost to household net worth. That's the exact opposite of what has happened in China. There's been household net worth destruction as a result result of the pandemic and high unemployment rates. So where is this consumption boost going to come from? And the other thing, Joe and Scott, I was going to say, you know, what's happening with retail. You look at the performance of XRT, for example, that ETF has gone nowhere, and that's pure retail. But if you look at IYC, which is a consumer services ETF, that has gone somewhere, not tremendous, but it's certainly outperforming. And that tells you where consumers are spending and what they're prioritizing. It's not luxury, it's services.